Short disclaimer, this video is part of my multiplayer series and in this episode I created a build that I was not very happy with. If you're just here to see what mistakes I made and how I decided to fix them, feel free to check out the description and skip ahead. And now let's start with the video. Hello! In this video we will be adding our own building to this awesome Viking village island. And as you can see, we already had a few additions since last episode. We have this lighthouse over there that we can check out later as well. Especially the house on the side has awesome interior design, very detailed. And then we have Macro D over here who also added a building of his. And his buildings are just amazing. He also makes some videos, so make sure to check him out. Uh, the channel is in the description down below. But he's just amazing talented with all the details. Like look at the usage of uh, all of these walls and slabs and stairs. It looks always unique when he does something. Then we have this graveyard that I showed you last video that L built and he asked for someone to build a church next to it. And this is what we will be doing today. I marked out an area, but actually after, cre uh, after experimenting a little bit in creative, I realized I need a lot of more, I need a lot more space. And what we were building is some kind of, I think the proper term is a stave church. It should have this Nordic touch. Then the other thing we will want to do today as the sun sets in the background, we want to finally build the gold farm that I was talking about in the last episode. Uh, but for now, we will need to go and, <laughs> and collect resources. A lot of wood, a lot of wood for this church. After some resource gathering, we got about 12 stacks of spruce logs, some 20 stacks of dark oak logs and I already crafted up some stairs. I will probably need to do some more crafting, I need quite a few trapdoors, spruce trapdoors. But I hope that is enough for the build, we will see, maybe I have to go and gather some more resources. For now we have to make this area a little bit more flat, I think we go like this. And as I said earlier, we need a lot more space than this. This is like a 15 by 15 area, I think. And I extended my foundation to a 17 by 15, but then I added on each of the four sides, I added like a five block uh, exterior kind of thing. <laughs> you will see that in the time lapse just in a minute, I think. I will flatten this area a little bit more and then we will start with the time lapse. And this is how it looks after some terraforming. You can still see some dirt where no grass has grown yet. I tried to make the hills look natural. We can always change that later. But for now, I think I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. This space should be enough to start building.
Okay, after that time lapse, we need to we need to talk about a few things. We are back in the replay, and you probably noticed in the beginning that someone came <laughs> and just put slime blocks all over the place. That someone is none other than Husky himself. Let's take a look at him. <laughs> this guy, the former sheep face, and now he has he has another skin for this Viking village. Yes. He has he he is a troll. He has been doing a few things for for many many times now. And actually, let me show something else that he did. Since Husky and I both have a witch farm, and that's the reason why we made the redstone shop, he was trolling me. So in the witch farm, we we get a lot of drops that are pretty useless, like the sugar, the glass bottles. They are not useless, but in that quantity, they are super useless. And maybe you remember in one of the earlier episodes around here when we were building the cobblestone farm, he placed a lot of witch heads and some chests. That was not all. I recently, he actually recently told me that the biggest thing that he did, I didn't discover yet, but I actually discovered it a few days ago. If we remove these grass blocks, it unveils <laughs> a plethora of chests. Wait, how far is this going? Okay, that's it. And all of these chests. Okay, the glowstone. I don't mind the glowstone, actually. <laughs> but the rest, the spider eyes, the sugar, some empty chests. I, I guess he, he would come from time to time and, and fill them up again. That's just... <laughs> that's just such a troll. And then he discovered my to-do board, my to-do list. And he put down giving Husky 1,000 diamonds. He also, no, not him, but uh, Eagle at one point then <laughs> discovered this and put down giving uh, giving Eagle 1,000 diamonds. Those things will obviously not happen, but I think it's the point, it has come to the point where I have to think of some kind of revenge reward uh, towards Husky. But we will cover that at a later point. Let's get back to the Viking village. And we are back in the village on the island. And there you can see the church, the stave church. And I need to tell you something about, about this build. I obviously designed it before in creative and then reproduced it here. And when I designed it, I was so much focused on the shape, on the different roofs, how to stack them up on one, one another, that I kind of forgot to look at the rest of it, if you know what I mean. So I really love the shape. The shape I think is amazing. It turned out really great, but it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It's so, it seems super flat. Like in the bottom, it's all the same color. Then the roof, it's all the same color. The spruce locks and the dark oak stairs almost perfectly match in its color. and. Then this is the stripped dark oak logs and they match quite well with the spruce wood. So they match very well with one another, but there is just no contrast. There is no details and there is no depth. And also there is no interior yet. I thought we need to redo a few things to bring in these three things that I just mentioned. We need contrast, we need details and we need depth. As you can see here, this wall is super flat and all around it's super flat. So we will start with that and we will start by taking out all these pillars and replacing them with acacia logs. So let's do this for the bottom floor and already maybe, hopefully, we should see a big change in the contrast we get from this building. So far we have only exchanged the pillars on the bottom floor, but I feel like already it gives so much more contrast to the building. And now imagine we do it as well with where we got the spruce logs and the other dark oak logs. And we will add a few more additions and change a few more things uh, regarding depth. But let's continue with the bottom floor. The other thing that I wanted to try is another aspect for, for the contrast. And it's to rip out these walls, the the two lower levels of these walls. Even though I like the detail with the, with the trapdoor, with the spruce trapdoor. But we use the spruce trapdoor so much in this build already, it doesn't hurt to use something else down there. And I thought of using stripped oak logs. 
Almost feels a little bit naked like this. Okay, let's get the oak logs in. I find that looks promising. I think already it has so much more contrast. <laughs> It looks a million times better because of that. We can add a little bit of depth and detail now by adding some fence posts on the side of this. And yeah, we will actually also get this lock over there with the, with the screws. We will bring it out by one in each direction and exchange it for acacia, obviously, so that it will actually reach down until here and then also offer us a little bit of depth and detail for the bottom layer. Before we take a look at the bottom level, we have to look at this. As we extended this by one block on each side now, we have to take the roof lower, one block lower and one block further out. Okay, that looks a little bit better. The rooftop, this, this ornate design, looks a little bit off now as it's one block too short, but we will change that anyway later, maybe in a minute or two for you in the video. But let's take a look. We put dark oak fences all over here and then put fence gates in the middle. And for the longer sides, we put some fences in the middle to kind of break up and kind of make it archy, <laughs> like an arc. I, I never know how to pronounce it. If I should pronounce it arc or arch, I, I'm kind of torn between those two, two aspects. Anyhow, we have now a lot of detail and a lot more depth and contrast in this bottom layer. So what I will do now is I will exchange all these uh, remaining spruce and dark oak pillars with acacia and I will exchange these rooftops ornate designs with actually with blackstone. All right, I'm standing on top of the lighthouse <laughs> and this already looks a million times better. You can see that on the rooftops I added two slabs at the end and it kind of creates a little bit more of a curve, but just alone the blackstone already, it makes it, <laughs> again, it gives it so much more contrast and upgrades the build tenfold, I feel like. This is amazing progress. I, I was really surprised when I when I decided to, to redo some of the build because I was unhappy with it. Usually I'm a perfectionist and I tell myself to not be a perfectionist, to just be happy even though, um, even though it's not perfect. But with this one, I really felt like I could do better and it wasn't too much work, actually. We have a few more things going. I think I will extend a few of these fences, dark oak fences, and then this facade from the, from the front needs to change a little bit and maybe the top and one or two other things. I, I had an idea with, uh, with the walls. Let me try a few more things and then maybe we are finished with the exterior for today. Okay, I exchanged this cross beam with the acacia wood and ripped out the spruce logs for normal spruce planks. And now I wanted to show you a few small things. That's something that I learned from B double O, but I don't know if it's from him himself or if he learned it somewhere else. Fence gates, when they attach to walls, have a different height position to when they don't. So if you have a wall and then three fence gates and another wall, you have these fence gates in this awesome, awesome curve, which is, which is super cool. And the other thing that I recently saw on Reddit actually is that we can use string. Now we have the string here and place an anvil on top of the string and it won't fall. fall. And now it looks like the anvil is being held up by the chain, which I think is a is a really awesome fit for this theme, for this Viking theme. And this is what I got so far. I'm just seeing right now, I forgot some fences over there. I have, I have still many questions left and maybe you can help me answer some of them. So one thing is I find it quite monotone to always have dark oak fences for the, for the contrast and the depth on these pillars. But they work very well. They work really well. I love them. I just don't want to use them all the time. <laughs> then the other question that I have is what to do with the roof and the walls. Because I love texturing, but I find it so difficult to texture wooden areas, wooden roofs, wooden walls, 
because it always ends up looking like some kind of uh, checkers pattern where checkerboard pattern where it's just one color of wood then another and even if it's uneven and not not an even distribution of the different colors the contrast between the different wood colors is too high to just to just texture with it like you would with a normal stone and andesite so it's still a little bit difficult there are still a few things like the roofs where i'm not extremely happy with but i think it does look a million times better than we just had it before and i wonder right now for example if i should add even more dark oak fences up here or if i should use some buttons uh, you can use some buttons like let's let's see you could also use blackstone buttons um, this also adds some kind of detail and contrast but then it's also weird if if like all the locks are filled with buttons let me know uh let me know what you think i'm really excited to hear some of your thoughts and ideas maybe i can implement some of them for now i think that's it with the exterior to this I just wanted to enjoy this view one more time from the graveyard. As El just said, when he built this, he wanted to have a church there. And I think it looks fantastic. It really does. Yeah, I'm torn apart right now because on one hand, I still want to build the gold farm. But even though I haven't started editing yet, I feel like we are quite far in this episode already. And... I don't have any grand interior designs right now ready, but I have something for this bottom area. Something small, but cool, I think. Right now, you can just look through all of it. And I was thinking to create some kind of chapel in here. That I think that we will do that, and then I will see how much time we have left. But I feel like the gold farm has to wait for next episode. This is, by the way, how it looks from the inside. I kind of like it and there's a lot of potential, but as I said so many times, I'm not experienced with interior design. Maybe I can get together with Macro D and have him help me and kind of learn from him because he does amazing things. Anyhow, let's get to this chapel area. All right, we are now inside of this beautiful chapel. What do you think? What do you think? It's super plain, I know. Uh, this is just my basic idea right now to not to not be able to look through all of it and then we can maybe do a few things inside. That was the main problem for me that you could just look through. But then when I looked at pictures of stave churches uh, on Google Images, I saw that most of them were actually quite dark. And I like this idea. And so you can see I have some black wool on my hotbar as well. I decided to put black banners all around and I think that kind of looks nice. I think it looks better from further away so we will have to add it to these two sides as well. <laughs> and <sighs> the troll strikes again. Anyhow, I, I colored all my sheep black and got lots of black of wool and I will make more banners and plaster them around. What do you think? I'm really interested to hear what you think. <laughs> it's it's really something very new to me to build, to to create a building like this. And also the process that I created that we just went through together was quite unique as in the beginning, as I said earlier, I was more concerned with the shape, but not really with the design, with the colors, with the depth, with the details, with the contrast. I kind of like it. I think it fits. I think now it needs a lot more details inside. That is something that I'm not able to do right now. But I'm happy for now with it. I, I really am. I think with this angle you cannot see any difference. <laughs> but this is how my base looks right now. This is how it looks in between episodes when I'm preparing something. When now I need some green dye because I want to color all the sheep cyan. Uh, whoa! Creepers, creepers, creepers! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I didn't even... <sighs> All these distractions. I wanted to talk about... And another one. Creeper City and another one behind there. I wanted to show you these honey blocks and basically... Uh, basically talk about how Husky came by and discovered that I discovered all the chests. And then he just stopped by and burned all the contents of the chest. 
and that was quite fun. I'm not sure if uh, if he will be scared of revenge. I know that most of the time he's watching the video, so maybe now he is scared. Let me know what ideas or if any ideas you have to to get some revenge on him. Anyhow, the other thing that we did was that we just came together and wanted to have some fun. And I don't have any recordings of it really, except for this, where I just showed the Schalke box that we put together as a small little gift for honor. He recently joined the server. Awesome guy as well. He's working on a crazy base. I can showcase maybe some people's bases soon. But Husky and I decided to prepare this little gift chest and surprise him. We drank some invisibility potions <laughs> and kind of trolled him. And I died during that. <laughs> but again, I don't really have any uh, clips for that. I'm done for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will be building the gold farm next episode. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. If you're new, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next episode.